Hi, I'm Yanis Kanellos and I'm going to demonstrate how you can use JClouds from inside Apache Caraf in order to communicate with any public cloud provider. JClouds provides a Caraf feature repository which makes very easy to install JClouds providers on any Caraf based container. All I need to do is to install the feature repository and then install the feature for the provider that I want and also install the feature for the JCloud shell commands. In this example, I'll be using Amazon EC2. JCloud not only provides shell commands for Caraf, but it also provides managed service factories, which are used to configure, instantiate, and register to the OGI service registry JCloud's compute services. The compute services are used to interact with the cloud provider. Creating a compute service inside Caraf is as simple as creating the configuration. In this example, I'll create a configuration with pad.org.jclouds.compute-ec2 and I'll specify the provider, which is AWS-ec2, the identity for ec2 and the credential for ec2. Those two values are provided by the cloud provider. As soon as the configuration is stored, a new compute service is registered to the OSGI service registry and is ready for use. Let's list the available compute providers. Since Amazon EC2 is the only compute provider available, all the cell commands will by default use that compute provider. Please note that if I had multiple compute providers installed, I would have to explicitly specify for each command which compute provider I wanted to use. Let's list the available images on EC2. I'll be using this image in order to create a new node on Europe West 1 region. As you can see, tab completion makes node creation really easy. I would dare to say that it might be even easier than using EC2 web interface. I will get a list of all nodes from the cell and then cross-check with the EC2 console. I can use the cell in order to execute scripts or simple commands on the newly created node. I can either use the direct option in order to inline simple commands or to use the script URL option in order to pass the URL of the script that I want to be executed. In this example, I'll be using the direct option to perform a simple ls command. Once the node is not needed anymore, it can be destroyed using its ID or its group name. Again, I'm cross-checking with the EC2 console in order to see that the node is properly terminated. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it.